Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use discriminated unions or DUs in C Sharp today without having to wait for that feature to be eventually out in C Sharp 13 or 14 because we're not getting it in 12. Of course the experience won't be a one for one with what we will eventually get but it's a good start to see how you can use them in your code, how you can adapt your code and understand the logic behind them and why they're so cool and one of the most requested features of C Sharp. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe ring the same notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsters.com but before i move on i'm extremely happy to announce that i just launched my brand new course from zero to hero rest apis in dotnet it is the only course you need to learn how to build elegant rest apis in dotnet and this is effectively the combination of what i learned in the past six years of my career building REST APIs for millions of customers and some of the biggest companies in the world. It starts from the theory and the most basic features of REST APIs and it goes into some of the most advanced ones like building SDKs for your consumers to consume your REST API programmatically and even contains a migration guide to move from controller-based APIs, which this course is using, into minimal APIs. To celebrate the launch, I'm offering the first 200 of you a 15% discount code, so if you want to do what thousands of you have done already, check that link in the description and apply discount code REST15 for that discount. Now back to the video. Alright, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple REST API over here. I'm going to just run it first to show you what I have from a user experience standpoint, and then we're going to see what we have in the code. So here we have a simple REST API that just stores movies, and all I'm going to do is create this brand new movie called Nick the Greek that came out in 2023. It is a comedy, of course. So I'm going to just create it, and we get this sort of model with an ID, a title, a slug, which is like a friendly sort of URL usage title alongside the year and then the genre and everything else. And this is using an in-memory database because if you want to grab the code from the description down below and use it, you don't have to install anything. And then I can get this ID and go to the get endpoint and get by ID, but I can also get by slug. So if I just copy this, slug is unique per movie. So I'm going to get the movie again. If I make a mistake or the movie doesn't exist, I'm going to get a 404. As you'd expect, I can list all movies. I can update a movie, so if I want to add another genre here, I'm going to just quickly grab that ID over here, paste it, and then update. And then in the end, I can just delete a movie, get to 100. And if I try to delete a deleted movie, I get a 404. So all good for a REST API. Now, here's what the code looks like. And I'm going to go in the movie service first. So here we have this in-memory database I talked about. It's just concurrent dictionaries. Don't worry about it. It just makes our life easier. But uh, the method, for example, the create method looks like this. We have a movie validator. That's the first thing we call. And we try to validate the incoming movie. If the movie is invalid, and actually I didn't show that in the demo, but if I go here and I try to create a movie, for example, in the future, you cannot add an upcoming movie. So it's going to say year of release must be less or equal than 2023. If I try to have an empty title, it's going to say, hey, what are you doing here? The title is empty. If I make multiple mistakes, I'm going to get all of them in the, uh, the response and so on. So I have full support for validation. And what's happening here is I'm using Fluent Validator here. I have this movie validator object and these are my rules. And if the validation fails, I say validate and throw. And what I have to translate this throw an exception into a validation result, a bad request, is over here in mapping, I have validation mapping middleware, where if it is a validation exception, I basically map the response to my contract, the validation failure response, and then I write that as JSON. And that is it. And let's go back to the service. So this is a Boolean, you either created or not. The thing is, I never really returned true, so this could also not be a Boolean. But having something that isn't a boolean that creates looks weird, so I just have it as it is. We're gonna see why that's important actually as we go. Then if I scroll down, you have your get by ID and you get by slug. So if the movie doesn't exist in the database, you're gonna get null. I'm using null reference type, so that's why I have the question mark. If it is null, you're gonna get null, and on null, we're gonna map it to a not found. If it does exist, we're gonna say okay, it does exist in both cases. So same thing get all of course always returns okay even if you have nothing in the database and then update is interesting because you have validate and throw because we validate when we update to make sure the new data is actually valid but then if the movie doesn't exist and you try to update something that doesn't exist we return null and we translate null to not found eventually in the response and if it does exist and it did pass validation we just return the movie we just updated and that is it now here's where the problem lies and why discriminated unions are so powerful 
This method, this update method, for example, and the problem is with all the other methods as well, but this one is the main one. This method does three things, but the caller only knows about two things, that the value can be a movie or it can be null. Now, the value also needs to know that if it is null, I have to map it into a not found. If it's not null, then I have to return the movie, which is fine. But outside of context, like if I take this movie service and I take it in another application, this middleware that actually converts this validation exception to a response is sort of transparent and the user doesn't even know it exists. So even though the method does three things and needs to be handled in three separate ways, the caller doesn't know about that because ultimately the contract I have in my interface is just update a movie that can return nullable. It really doesn't tell you much. And this is where discriminated unions come in and they actually fix the problem because they allow you to say that this method doesn't actually return just one type, the movie, but one of several types. So in this case, what do we have? We have a validation error. So this method could return a validation error. The reason why we don't return it is because C Sharp just doesn't support returning multiple things. And no, tuples are not the same. Tuples are multiple things at the same time. Discriminated unions is one of multiple things, but you only get one of them. So we have the validation, we have the not found, and then we have the movie. Let's see how we can fix it. And to fix it, we're going to use what's probably your best shot at having discriminated unions before the feature is officially out in two or three years. And that is a new Git package called OneOf. Now, you know how it is with open source. I'm going to put a link in the description. If you like what you see, give OneOf a star. It's a great project. I've used it. It has millions of downloads. It's fantastic for this sort of thing. So I'm going to go to dependencies and I'm just going to say one of and i'm going to start with just the plain one of those other sub packages we're going to take a look at them in a second but for now i'm just going to install the raw package and here's how my contract changes because fundamentally i have three use cases in update and i'm going to go to the interface contract to update it here first so i'm going to say this method now returns one of three things so one of and the things are it can return a movie if the movie was successfully updated in the database. It can return not found, and not found is a type in one of, so it's a struct that you can actually just return to indicate what happened. And it can also return validation failed. Now this type does not exist, and I am going to introduce it, so I'm going to say new validation failed in here. And for now, I'm just going to leave it at the top level. You can organize things as you want, but I'm going to represent it as this type over here. So I'm going to reuse fluent validations, uh, validation failure type, which you can see in here in fluent validation which is what i'm using for validation and then we can have multiple errors and i also have a, a secondary constructor that only accepts one error and eventually returns it as a single enumerable so now this thing can return one of three things so i'm going to just copy this i'm going to go back to update and i'm going to change this and now look how this changes nothing nullable no null no need for nullable reference types no nothing you can just drop this in and in here what happened Oh, the movie was just not found. So new, not found. And this is a struct, so don't worry, allocations are minimized. What else happened? Well, we have this validator throw, which I really don't like having this middleware and the need to validate somewhere else that is not necessarily part of this, which ultimately might actually be taken out and live in an application layer, not in the API layer in the application. So I'm going to use the validate method instead. And by the way, this is all possible if you were using async as well. So I'm going to say var validation result equals this and i'm not going to throw anymore and i'm going to say that if validation result is not valid so if validation failed effectively return new validation fail the type we just created and we're going to pass down validation result dot errors and that is it we're passing those validation errors down and then we will eventually map them to a contract to a response and then in the end the movie itself i don't need to do anything because the movie will be mapped now you might be looking at this and saying, okay, wait a second, how are we returning not found and then validation failed if the type here is one of? Well, one of in the struct, you will actually see over here at the bottom that it automatically has some implicit operators to convert from one type to the other. So you don't have to worry about converting this automatically. It will be done automatically without you having to say new one of these three things which is an awesome experience and now if we go to the controller look what happens we don't have to have these null checks and assumptions on how things can be consumed and having to worry about this middleware over here all we're going to say is that this is now 
a result or an update result, depending on how you want to name this. And we're going to say return result dot. And now we can do two things. We can either switch on something. So we can have a compile time switch and we have to process each type individually, but switch doesn't really return anything. It just processes something based on what happened, which you can do technically with uh, switch expressions nowadays. But when this came out, they weren't a thing. But you can also match and you have to match every single type. So if it's a movie, you have to describe what happens when you're returning a movie. If it's not found, not found. And when it's validation failure, you have to handle that. And by the way, some people go further and they split validation failures into individual states. So invalid username, invalid email. I'm not a fan of that. I think it actually bloats the signature quite a bit, but that's completely up to you. You can now specify one of as many things as you want. So the first one, for example, is if the movie exists and it was updated, I'm going to say, hey, return, okay. And the object I want here is m dot, because now I have the movie map to respond. So my contract mapping, if it was not found, I can just reject it because I'm not doing something with the object and just say return not found result. And if I have a validation failure, so failed, then all I'm going to do is say bad request and then failed, which is the validation failed. And I'm going to map this to a contract. So I'm going to go to contract mapping and I'm going to introduce a couple of methods. So here we go. We have the mapped response and mapped response to validation failure response, which is our contract. So I'm going to go back here and say dot map to response. Now, the reason why this complaints is because I have to be explicit about my I action result. This is not necessary in most cases, but when you have an interface like this, that can be anything. It will require you to pin it down. But once we have that, I don't need anything else. And now if I just stick breakpoints in each individual thing and I debug it, watch what happens. I'm going to go back into my update endpoint. So let's go ahead and create a movie. Movies created. I'm going to use this and I'm going to go to update now and try to update the year of release in the future. Obviously this will fail. Let's see how it fails. It goes here and it automatically steps into the bad request. And I have my object over here with all my errors. And you can see the error is year of release must be less or equal to 2023. No exception thrown, no exception based control flow, none of that. It goes straight into the response right here. Making what this method extremely clear and forcing you to handle with the match method every possible situation. It is fantastic on an approach. And of course, you know, if the year was right, but the ID was wrong, so the movie did not exist, then you're going to get not found and no to step into this. And if everything matches, then we're going to get Okay, so it goes in here, maps it response, and everything is awesome. Now, this is not just useful for things returning multiple things. For example, if we have two things here, you know, the create has a Boolean. The Boolean can mean anything. Okay, I assume it means yes or no or true or false, meaning yes, created or not created. But I don't really have a no here, but I do want to indicate success. So what do I do? Well, I use discriminated unions. So one of, but one of also has this success struct that I can use. So I have success without any type. And then the other type is validation failed because I still have that. So I'm going to go and just update the contract at the bottom over here and say, create is one of these two things, success or validation failed. I'm going to change validation and throw. So validation result over here, validation result dot errors go here. And I can do the same with this one. So no longer need to throw, just copy this, paste it here and return a new error exactly as it was before. Here we go. And by the way, just removing those exceptions that are being thrown and caught and then remapped were actually significantly improving performance and memory as well. So it is a win-win. And then in the end, I'm just going to say return new success. And that is it. And now in the consumer, I have to do the same handling. So none of that anymore. All I'm going to say is return var result equals this result dot match. I'm going to match every use case. So I have success and I could even return the type if I wanted to. So the movie itself, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say return this. And if you have any validation failure, then return bad request and just map that to a response. And that is it. I'm just going to have to say this is an I action result. And here you go. And this is the same with nullable things. You don't have to worry about the nullable things. Now what you can say is one off. And in this case, what we're implementing is sort of an option discriminated union where it can be some value or no value. So here we have the movie, which is our some value. And then we have the other type, which is just none. There is no movie with this ID. So no null, no concept of null to be consumed. We're going to update this and we're going to update the update by slug as well. So now I've updated everything to use discriminated unions in the movie service. And I can go ahead and just 
deregister this validation middleware thingy. And if I go ahead and I just run the API, I can go back and as you're going to see, everything works the same. We still have the validation. We still have everything and go back and just list all the movies, get the movie. None of the functionality is away. It's just that now my interface for my service is way more descriptive in what it can do. And the consumer of that interface has to deal with all the situations leading in better code, which is ultimately the goal here. Now, there's two things I want to mention. You might be seeing things like this and thinking, oh my God, this is just becoming such a long, like generic focused one of response. This will make my code look very ugly. You can actually bundle everything here. So you can say public class movie update result, and you can implement the one of base, moving everything in here, implementing the missing constructor. And once you have that, you can just change this here and all the way up here. The problem with this approach is that now you're going to get compilation errors and you have to define your own implicit operators for them to go away. So it is a bit trickier to implement, but you can do it and it does give you the same experience of returning multiple types and the user still has to consume them in the same way as before. This is not taken away from you. However, this is not optimal. And the great thing about this is that it's fine because the creator has created a source generator for one of. So if I go ahead and I just add the one of dot source generator package and I remove everything here and I turn this into a partial class, I can say generate one of here and just save. And then once the source generator kicks in, you no longer have this problem. Everything just automatically has that implicit operator in place. Ultimately, if you want to use it, it's up to you, but you should know that this is what people mean in principle when they talk about the use. And there's a clear benefit here in using it, I think. But I want to know from you, what do you think about this? Is this something you would use or is it just something that overcomplicates things and bloats the code of the consumer? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe more. Click the like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.